Hello everyone. Today I'm going to briefly take you through how you can use Sketch to build your own custom floor plan for Remo quickly and easily. Creating custom floor plans seems very scary and intimidating. I get it. But really, it's just about creating different shapes, grouping them together in layers, and then naming those layers a specific way. So in this tutorial, I'm going to take you through each of the elements and how you can create them in Sketch. First of all though, Sketch is only available for Mac users. So if you don't have access to a Mac laptop, you may be better off using Adobe Illustrator or another design application. You can download a free 30-day trial for Sketch through their website, but after that it is a lifetime payment. So it's actually a cheaper alternative to some other design applications. Before we begin, if this is your first time designing a custom floor plan, I recommend you download our standard floor plan from our design guidelines on our help center. This way you can use the standard floor plan as a template and play around with it first. Because honestly, the best way to learn to create a floor plan is to dissect the one we have so you can better understand how it was created and how you can go about creating your very own. That being said, I'm going to take you through some of the key aspects to make this testing and experimental process a little bit easier for you. So this is Sketch. If you want to move around, you can use your mouse pad to scroll left, right, up, and down. You can also use the pinch zoom in and pinch zoom out, just like you would on Google Maps. On the top over here, you'll have our toolbar, and this is where you can insert any shapes or text elements you want when designing your floor plan. Just go to insert, and then you'll have the choice between shapes, vectors, and text. On the right side over here is where you can control the various properties of your elements, such as the size, colors, fonts, and more. On the left side here is where you can see all the layers you have in your floor plan. Now layers are really important when designing your custom floor plan, because essentially each element, like the table, the seats, the billboards, they'll have their very own layer. And the way you name that layer is how the Remo system will recognize these elements for what they are. To create a layer in Sketch, you just need to select all the elements you want in a layer together, and then right click, and select Group Selection. Then to rename the layer, you can just double click on the layer and rename it as so. Once you create a layer, you'll notice this little arrow button over here. This will expand or collapse the layer. You can think of a layer kind of like a folder on your computer or on your desk. Inside a folder, you're going to have other documents or papers. So just like that, inside a layer, you've got different elements. So to see what elements are inside your layer, you can click this arrow. To reorder layers, you can click the layer and drag it to whatever order you prefer. To remove elements from a layer, just click the element and drag it outside the layer folder. Similarly, to add elements to a layer, again click on the element you want to add and drag it into the, into the layer. Alright, now I'm going to take you through constructing each of the elements one by one. So to begin with, you've got the floor plan background. That's, well, exactly what it sounds like. It's the background of your entire floor plan. In our standard layout, it's the green part with the trees and bushes. There's nothing functional about this area. It's just there to make your floor plan look nice and give your guests some context. So you can add a rectangle and fill it with whatever color you want, like your brand's colors, for example, or you could even add an image if you'd prefer by copying and pasting it like you would do on a Word document. I'm going to use an image for my floor plan background. So I've found an image from Unsplash that I really like for the background. So I'm going to drag the image into my design file as so. Now it's really big, so I'm going to need to resize it first. Now in order to let the Remo system know that this image is my floor plan background, I'm going to have to layer it as so. So in Sketch, all I have to do is select whatever I want included in the floor plan background. So in this case, it's the image right click and select group selection and this creates a layer containing the image or whatever i've selected and now i'm going to name this layer map dash background now for the important parts the actual conference area this is the core conference area where all of your functional elements are going to be placed now you can play around with the size of this area but keep it to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio and keep in mind that this area will be zoomed in to fit your guest's browser view, so you don't want to make it too big or too small. 
Again, all this area is, is another rectangle or image if you want. So I'm going to create a rectangle this time. And to do that in Sketch, I go into Insert, Shape, Rectangle. And then I draw it on my design file. And now I want to color this rectangle Remo Pink. I can do that by changing the fill color over here on the right hand side. And again, the important part is to create a layer and name it appropriately. So again, select all the elements that you want to be included in this layer. So for this example, it's just the rectangle. And then I'm going to right click and select group selection. But this time I'm going to name it conference dash area. And now remember that this needs to be a separate layer from the floor plan background. So just check your layers panel here to make sure that they are in fact separated. Now let's move on to the finer details within your conference area. First up is the tables, the heart and soul of any Remo floor plan. So tables, or I should say table layers, can be any size. But remember, they all need to fit within the conference area space you just created. Now I want to clarify some things first because it can get a little bit confusing. So this whole area is what we call the table or the table layer. So all these elements you're seeing like the mattress and the seats and the table and the laptop, this is all under the table layer. So your guest can click anywhere here and they'll be able to move to this table. Okay, so when we say table, we don't just mean the circular part over here, we're actually referring to the whole area. Alright, so let's say I want to create a bar area for one of my tables. So I'm going to need a bar table. So that's essentially three rectangles. So I'm going to create the first rectangle by clicking insert at the top, shapes, and then rectangle. And then I can draw my rectangle. I want my bar table to be brown in color, so under the fill section, I'm going to select a brownish color. Now I'm going to copy and paste the rectangle so I can keep the same color. Adjust its rotation. And change its size. Now I'll place it where it needs to go. And I'll copy and paste again. And now I've got my bar table. So now let's say I want to add a rug beneath the table. So I'm going to add another rectangle. And now I can choose to add a color here or even a gradient, but you can also choose to fill shapes or elements with pre-existing patterns by clicking this image icon over here in the fill section and selecting a pattern from the choices available, like so. But you may have noticed that there's an issue here. The rug is actually above the bar table, which should not happen. So to fix this, you just need to reorder the elements, and you can do that on the layers panel on the left hand side. So I want the rug to be beneath my bar table. So I'm selecting the rug rectangle over here and dragging it below the bar table rectangles. And there you go, I've adjusted my order. Okay, so now you can choose to add any other elements, like if you wanted to add food or drink, you can do that here. You will have to add seats into this table as well, but we'll go through that in a while, so just hold on to that thought for a moment. Now comes the important part of the tables, naming them. So when you're naming tables, you need to assign them what we call a unique identifier. This essentially is just a way to identify which table is which. Okay, so the way to name this is again, select all the elements you want underneath the table. So in this case, I want the three rectangles making up my bar table and the rectangle representing my rug. I'm going to right click and select group selection. Now name it table dash whatever your table name is. So for example, if I wanted to call this table the bar area, I would name the layer table dash bar area. Or if I wanted to call it the chillout zone, I would name it table dash chillout zone. Now remember, it's a unique identifier, meaning these layer names cannot be repeated. So if you wanted multiple bar areas, for example, the best idea is to just write table dash bar area one for the first one. And then for the next bar area table you make, you would name the layer table dash bar area two and so on. All right, so now whatever other elements you want to put on the table or around the table need to be put into this ta table layer that you've just created. 
So what are some of the things that you want to be putting into table layers? Well, of course, there's the physical table if you want it. So in our example, that's the bar table over here and the rug. You also need to add in seats, an admin seat if you want it, and the name of the table. So let's go through each of those in turn. Table names. These help your guests navigate your event space. You can name them however you want, and even if you name them here, as long as you follow the guidelines on how to set it up, like I'll show you, you'll be able to edit them in the event space as well, just like you would using a standard floor plan. Okay, so essentially the table name is just a text element. So click insert and then text, and then write down the table name. So I'm calling it bar area. Now again, you need to create a layer out of this. So select the text element on the left side panel, right click and select group selection. And you're going to call this layer name. Now again, this name layer that you've just created needs to be under the respective table layer. So I'm going to select this layer that I've just created and drag it to the appropriate table layer or folder. Next up is the seats. This is where your guests will be sitting or will be placed when they first enter the event. It can be any shape, so like you can see the couch on our standard floor plan or other event hosts have actually designed beach chairs. It's completely up to you. This couch over here is actually created by joining a bunch of rectangles and circles together, so it really is whatever you can put together. But bear in mind, avatars are going to be 55 by 55 pixels and will be rendered as circles. So just remember that when you're designing your seats. So since I'm creating a bar, I want to make bar stools for my seats. And that's just a simple oval. So to make that, I click insert, shapes, and oval, and then draw myself an oval. Now I'm going to change the size of this to 60 by 60 pixels on the right hand side panel over here so that when an avatar sits there, the entire seat is not, co not covered completely. So now that I've designed it, I have to create a layer for the seat as well. So again, just select all the elements that make up the seat. So in this example, it's just the oval, but in yours, it could be a series of shapes depending on how you've designed the seats. Right click and select group selection. Now you need to name it correctly as well. So to do that, Double click on the layer you just created and then name it seat. Now I like to add some more information to this name but it's not compulsory. The only compulsory part is for it to begin with seat. I like to add the table number and seat number as well just to give myself some context about which table the seat belongs to. But again, you don't have to do that. What you do need to make sure though is that the seat that you've just created is put underneath the respective table layer. So as you can see, the seat that I've created is for the bar table. So I need to drag this element or this layer into the bar area table layer. Another very important thing to note for seats besides the nomenclature is the number of seats you have on a floor. So one thing with Remo is that we let guests freely choose what seats or what table they want to move to, which means there needs to be empty seats for them to move to. So what happens essentially is Remo fills up to 80% of the number of seats you've designed on the first floor when guests enter the space. And then it moves on to filling up the second floor. Sounds confusing? Let me break it down. For example, if you design 50 seats, Remo will put the first 40 guests that enter your event onto the first floor because 80% of 50 is 40. The next 40 guests to enter will be placed on the second floor and so on. So it fills up 80% of the capacity of your floor plan at a time. So always design more seats than the number of guests you want per floor. That being said, we allow a maximum of 120 seats per floor and a minimum of 25 seats, and this includes any admin seats. Speaking of which, the next element in a table layer is the admin seat. So this is the extra seat that hosts can occupy if the table gets full. So usually hosts will create an invisible seat to avoid guests' confusion if they see an empty seat on the table that they cannot occupy. But again, this is up to you. So I do want to create an invisible seat. So again, I'm just going to click insert, shape, and then oval. And then I can draw my oval. I'm going to adjust the size on the right side panel over here to 55 by 55 pixels to match the avatar size. 
and now to make it invisible i actually just need to deselect the fill and border options so on the right side you'll see that there's a checkbox next to fill and border if you uncheck that it will actually remove those colors and now look the oval is invisible on the floor plan now again you need to create a layer containing all the elements that make up the admin seat so again, in this example, it would just be the invisible oval. Right click and select group selection. And now the way you name this layer again is super important. So you need to name this layer admin dash seat. You can choose to add the table name afterwards as well. So you can easily identify which admin seat belongs to which table. But again, that would be up to you. You do, though, need to let Remo know which table the admin seat belongs to, and the way you do that is put it underneath the respective table layer as so. Alright, so now if I expand this table layer or folder, I can see within the layer I've got the table name, the admin seat, the one seat that I've created, and I've got the bar table as well as the rug. Now you would do exactly the same thing to create all your other tables, remembering that each new table would have its very own uniquely named table layer. And you also need to make sure that each of these table layers are put underneath the conference dash area layer that you created earlier. Now let's move on to the other parts like the green room or formerly known as the stage. Now remember the green room is the private meeting room or area where just hosts and registered speakers can enter. The green room can be any shape or size you want, but the number of seats you can have in the green room will depend on which plan you've subscribed to. So let's say I want a circular stage or a green room. So I'm going to click insert and then oval and draw it however big or small I want it to be. So here's my green room. Now, if you want your green room to actually allow hosts and speakers to enter, you're going to need to add seats. But don't worry, the process of adding seats to the green room is exactly the same as adding seats to a table. You can choose to make them visible or invisible. If you choose to keep them visible, you can also choose the design of the seats. For example, you could make a bench or even a couch. For my green room, I'm going to go ahead and keep them as invisible circles. So again, the process is exactly the same. I'm just creating an oval, changing the size on the right side panel, and making it invisible by deselecting the border and fill options. Now again, I need to create a layer for these individual seats. So I'm selecting the oval that makes up my seat and right clicking and selecting group selection to put that oval into a layer. I'm then calling that layer seat. Since I want more than one seat and my plan does allow for it, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste my oval like so. Now I need to group all of the elements of my green room together in another layer. So that includes the oval green room and the two seats that I've just created. So I've selected all of these parts. I'm going to right click and pick group selection. And I'm going to name this layer table dash stage. Now this essentially tells Remo that everything in this layer or folder is part of the green room. Okay, let's move on to the billboards. Now remember in Remo you can have two billboards. The left billboard is for a YouTube, Vimeo, or Twitch video, and the right billboard is for text, commonly used for an agenda or any important announcements. Essentially these two billboards are just two rectangles. You can choose to add shadows like we've done on the standard template or borders, but that's up to you. You can change the size as well for these billboards. So for example, if you were trying to create a floor plan for a movie premiere, you may choose to enlarge the left video billboard so it becomes like a movie screen. Or you can even choose to leave out the billboards completely if you have no purpose for them, but they must stay as rectangles. All right, so to create a billboard, I can click insert, shape, and then rectangle. And then I can draw my rectangle or right billboard however large or small I want it to be. Now I'm going to copy and paste this rectangle for the left billboard. But I'm going to make this larger than the right one because I want to really feature the video in my floor plan. Now we need to again put these into separate layers. So for the right billboard, I'm going to select my rectangle in the left side panel over here, right click, and pick group selection. 
and I'm going to name this table dash right dash billboard and I'll do the exact same for the left billboard. Select the rectangle in the left side panel, right click, group selection, but this time I'm going to name it table dash left dash billboard. Now I want to clean this up a little bit to make it look nicer, so I'm going to go ahead and group these two billboard layers together and create a new layer and call it screens. You'll notice that once you group them or put them in the same layer, if you select the layer, you can actually move everything in that layer all together or even change their sizes together. Sponsor banners work pretty much the same way as the billboards. Again, these are rectangles, but you guessed it, they've got to be named a certain way. The number of sponsor banners you can have per floor plan depends again on which remote plan you're subscribed to, so be sure to check that before creating your designs. These do have to be rectangles as well, and the recommended size is 245 by 120 pixels, but there is some wiggle room there so you can definitely experiment with it. Sponsor banners can also actually be of different sizes as well, however they all must stay as rectangles. Alright, so to actually add a sponsor banner, again click insert, and then shape, and then rectangle, and draw one out. I'm going to go ahead and follow the recommended size here by adjusting it in the properties tab on the right hand side. I'm also going to make the fill color invisible by deselecting the fill option just in case I end up not using the sponsor banner in my event space. But I do want to keep a border around it to highlight them, so I'm going to check the border option over here, choose a color, and I'm going to make sure that the border is thicker so that we can see it clearer. And then I'm going to name this sponsor banner rectangle, Sponsor. Now my plan allows for more than one sponsor banner, and I do want a second one to link to another event building or distribute downloadable content to my guests. So I'm just going to copy and paste my previous sponsor rectangle. But this time I'm going to make it slightly smaller in width, since this banner is not going to be for featuring a paying sponsor. But this time I'm going to name it Sponsor-2. So Remo understands that I've got two sponsor banners on my floor plan. If I wanted to add a third sponsor banner, I would do the same thing but call it sponsor-3 and then sponsor-4 and so on and so on. If you want, you can also add a text element under this group that indicates to your guests what these banners are and what they can do with them. To do that, you'd click insert and then text and write your text, but please note that this text cannot be changed in the event space. And guess what? You've just created all the elements of a Remo custom floor plan. How awesome is that? But one last thing, you need to make sure that all your layers are organized. So you should have two big layers. The first one is the map dash background layer, and this would contain anything on your floor plan background. So in our example, that was just the image. The second big layer is the conference dash area layer, and this one will contain the floor of your conference area, any tables and their respective table names, seats, and admin seats, the green room layer, billboards, and any sponsor banners. Now in order to export your entire floor plan, you need to create one final layer that contains everything you've just created. So select your two big layers, that's the map dash background and the conference dash area layer. Right click one last time and select group selection. Now you can name this super layer floor plan. Now the last step is you just need to export the file into SVG format. So in sketch, just select the floor plan super layer or the one that contains your floor plan background and conference area and click Make Exportable over here on the right hand side. From the drop down menu over here, select SVG, and you can also see all the layers and elements you'll be exporting in this preview image. Click Export Selected, and choose a file name. Now go onto our floor plan validator to check that everything's looking good. Once you're there, press Choose File, and choose your SVG file that you've just exported. Immediately, you'll see the results of the validator tool. This checks if all of the elements have been found and if there are any upfront errors. But that's not all. 
It's really important, even if you see green tick marks on all parts, that you also scroll down and check the actual image. Because sometimes your file may not export the way that it should, or the way that you've designed it may not map out to the Remo system the way that you'd imagined it. So by looking at the image, you can see if the placement of all your tables and seats are where you wanted them. You can also make sure that none of the table areas are overlapping each other. For your information, the gray area over here represents a table. And you can also make sure that all your other elements are also where you want them. One note on file sizes is that we recommend having a file size of about 500 KB to 1 MB. From our experience, these just work best. But that being said, there is some wiggle room, but please note that the greater the file size, the slower the load time for your guests, especially if they're not on a stable internet connection. So the general rule of thumb is to keep it as small as you can. If everything looks good to you, you can click the need help button over here, attach your floor plan and ask one of our representatives to upload it to your account. And we'll take it from there. All right. So that is a crash course in designing a custom floor plan on Sketch. Have fun!